If you had a magical object, like a magical Mario mushroom or a genie, something that could grant you a wish, what would you wish for? Would you fly, go to the Bahamas, make love with your celebrity crush, meet aliens, maybe ask God a question? Everybody's fantasies are different, but unfortunately, most people will never get to experience them. But not me, and maybe also not you. What if I told you that there is a way to experience any fantasy you want in a high definition, fully sensorial virtual reality simulator? And no, it's not the next Oculus, and no, it's not taking LSD. It is a natural psychological phenomenon. It requires no headset, no software subscription. It is built naturally into our brains something called lucid dreaming. And maybe you've heard of lucid dreaming. The movie Inception sort of made it more well known, but lucid dreaming is this incredible, internally accessible way of ending up in a high definition, virtual reality simulator of your own unconscious mind. I'm going to map out for you what lucid dreaming is and some of the research proving that it is a unique hybrid brain state. And of course, some of the extraordinary things that we can do when we are in this lucid state. But first, what is a lucid dream? A simple definition is simply that a lucid dream is when you are in a dream and that you are aware you are dreaming as you are dreaming. Now, this is not a vivid dream, just an intense dream or memorable dream. It's not even a prophetic dream where you dream something and it comes true. The key thing here is that you are self-aware while in the dream space. You know who you are, you know where you are, you're aware that, wow, right now I'm in a dream even though I know that I'm asleep in my bed. So it's a type of self-reflective quality of consciousness that defines what a lucid dream is. And you're probably thinking, wait, I actually think I've done this before. You were in a dream and you were kind of aware you were in a dream. And you know what? You probably have. Lucid dreaming is an entirely natural phenomenon. We do it a lot when we're kids, when we're teenagers. But to become masters of our dream space and be able to enact those fantasies we want to do, we have to train the skill. And that's the cool thing is that lucid dreaming is a skill that can be trained. I trained to become lucid. I've trained other people to become lucid. And as part of that process, you learn how to stabilize the dream, how to make the dream last longer. So you can stay in a dream and know that you're dreaming. And as you can imagine from that place, anything's possible. The second thing you need to know is that lucid dreaming is a scientifically verified brain state. I have the research, so much research. So many people I talk to who have never had a lucid dream are like, that sounds amazing, but is it even real? And I mean, I've been a practitioner now for over six years and I've had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of lucid dreams and some of the most profound healing and fun and just extraordinary experiences I've ever had have been in lucid dreams. And it's one of those things where like, when you've had a lucid dream, you really understand it's real. But I understand if you haven't and you're skeptical, you don't have to take my word for it. It's been scientifically validated for over 40 years. Back in the 1970s and 80s, there were a series of experiments that finally proved that lucid dreaming is real. And it's super cool how they proved it because back then they didn't have like an fMRI scanner, brain imaging to check it out. But they realized that when people are in REM sleep, you know, REM is rapid eye movement, even though their body is paralyzed, their eyes are not. And so I thought, well, if we could get an experienced lucid dreamer to fall asleep in our lab, hooked up to like an EEG, to track the brain activity and uh, muscle monitors around the eyes to track the, the movement of the eyes, theoretically, that lucid dreamer could get lucid and send us a signal using their eyes, kind of like a eye morse code. So they agree to a defined set of eye movements, like left, left, right, left, something like that. And they were tracking them as they slept. And for most of the night, nothing happened. The eyes move completely randomly when you're just in a non-lucid state. And then in the last hour of the night, they saw it coming through on the eye monitor, which is a defined and precise set of movements exactly as they had asked the dreamer to do. And so they had their first set of communications from the dream world and were able to prove that lucid dreaming is real. Since then, a whole lot of other research has been done using more sophisticated technology. One of my favorites is the 2012 study that came out of the Max Planck Institute of Psychiatry. And there, they're actually looking, they put a lucid dreamer into an fMRI scanner, got them lucid to see what happens to the brain. And what they found was that a part of your brain that is normally fast asleep when you're dreaming which is your right dorsal lateral prefrontal cortex, which by the way is associated with your sense of self, self-reflective capacity, impulse control. That piece is normally asleep when you're dreaming, 
but when you get lucid they found that it activated within a matter of seconds so they saw like wow the dreaming mind is, is online but also this conscious waking mind which is normally dormant comes back online and lucid dreaming is actually this amazing hybrid brain state of the two doesn't exist in any other moment except for when you get lucid even if you've never had a lucid dream before know that it is real so whatever your personal unique fantasy is you can actually make that come true if you train this skill although by the way most people actually do one of two things when they first get lucid and i'm actually curious if you can guess what they are put it in the comments below what do you think is the most common two things people do the first time they get lucid i'll reply and let you know if you're right my whole channel is dedicated to helping you train for and optimize your lucid dreaming experience. And you can start with some of the free resources in the description of this video, or you can always apply for one-to-one -one training with me. But back to this question of, if you had a magical object and it could grant your wish, what would you do? This is why being conscious in our dreams is so powerful and so important. It opens up an entire new realm of self-expression. When you get lucid, you have the ability to influence and co-create with the dreaming mind. The possibilities are literally limited only by your imagination. So I'm gonna take you on a quick whirlwind of some of the things you can do when you get lucid. First, you can just have fun. You can fly, you know, go horse riding, go surfing, go to a party, go to another country, eat any food that you want. The dream doesn't conform to your waking reality's sort of restrictions. So your ability to move your body, dance. I mean, for me, I can't sing in waking life. But in a dream, I can stand on a stage in front of 2,000 people and have the most perfect voice coming out of my mouth. So you can play with things in a more real than real way. You can also kind of experiment with changing gravity or the color of the sky. Just being in the lucid dream and learning how the dream works and what kind of magic you can do is one of the most enjoyable and empowering experiences. But yeah, that is just level one. The real power of lucid dreaming lies even deeper. When you're in a lucid dream, you have direct access to your own unconscious mind. This entire repository of information and memories and ideas that we often don't get during the day. So when you're in a dream, you can ask your mind questions, advice, direction on something creative or problem solving. A lot of famous artists and inventors actually use lucid dreaming, like Dali, who used it for his paintings, or the Wachowski siblings, who made The Matrix, or Nikola Tesla. And so you can work in your dream space to kind of access this much bigger part of yourself, your ideas, your memories, and your capabilities. Having direct access to your unconscious mind also means an enormous potential for healing. Within the Jungian psychology model, you could think of it as if you're calling up archetypes or calling up aspects of your psyche. You can actually ask to meet a personification of your inner child, right? I know for me, I've done a lot of shadow work, which is working with the parts of myself that have been sort of unconsciously repressed. I go into a dream and I can summon my, my money shadow, my sexual shadow, my wealth shadow, and a personification of that will actually arise in the dream and I can have a conversation with it. I can understand it. I can integrate it. So the kind of incredible, surreal possibilities for working with and healing your own mind are, for me, one of the most exciting parts of lucid dreaming. But if that's not your thing, you can also do straight up skills training. There are interesting studies showing how when martial artists or athletes practice their sport in a lucid dream, it improves their waking experience. And this isn't surprising, right? Because there are those studies showing that simply doing visualizations improve athletes' performance. And lucid dreaming is like visualization times 10,000 because you're in the dream actually doing it. And there's some studies that show that, you know, when you're in a lucid dream doing an activity, the neural correlates, like what's going on in your brain is exactly the same as if you were doing it in waking life. So when you're having a lucid dream, it's not just as if you're doing something. Your brain doesn't distinguish between what you did in a lucid dream and what you've done in reality. So <laughs> good and bad implications there. But if you want to use that for, let's say, your sports training or your music training, that's an amazing way to, to use the space as well. And the last idea I'll give you here is, well, if you're like me, then I highly advise doing spiritual practice in the dream. The Tibetan Buddhists have been practicing lucid dreaming for thousands of years. And they say that in the dream space, your spiritual practices are seven times more effective than doing in the waking space. And I've certainly had that experience. I remember doing uh, one of my Qigong exercises. And you know, in waking life, you kind of imagine feeling the energy. In a dream, 
your body actually fills up with energy. I could see the golden light coming into my hands. My feet actually grew into tree roots into the ground. It is such a powerful visceral experience. And the same with meditation. So if you have any spiritual practices you do, I really encourage you to take those into the lucid dreaming space and see what kind of magic happens when you do it there. Lucid dreaming is immensely powerful in whatever lane you're looking to cultivate. And the key thing is to know that it is real. It is possible. It is a trainable skill. And whatever it is that you want to do, whatever your fantasy is, you can do it. And it's something you have access to every single night. I mean, you're going to be sleeping anyway. You're going to be dreaming anyway. You might as well be lucid dreaming. And I love this quote from one of my teachers, Charlie Morley. He says, if you sleep, you dream. If you dream, you can lucid dream. Whether you sleep in a park or a palace, lucid dreaming is available to you. It is your birthright, unrestricted by censorship, state control, limited only by the relationship with your own inner state. Lucid dreaming is a taste of true freedom. But if you want to master your dreams and live your fantasies first, don't make one of these three big rookie mistakes that almost everybody does. You can watch my quick video. I will teach you how to avoid them and save yourself the wasted time and heartbreak.